Well, I think everyone here is really into investing in themselves, time and money. I've probably invested far more than anybody in the room in dollars and cents. I was earning a million most years, just under some years, just over some years. And I literally walked away from it and took a job for $18,000 a year. Had to move my entire family to Chicago. I worked long hours. I did a lot of traveling. Five years later, I was earning 33000 But you know something? I was prepared to pay them to let me work there. Because I had an opportunity to work with Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant. They were incredible human beings. They knew so much. And I want to know what they knew. A lot of people thought I was crazy. Why are you giving all that up and you're moving to Chicago? I had people say, what do you want to move to Chicago for? They had never been to Chicago, you know? I never really cared what it cost or how far I had to go. If I heard of a program that I thought was going to help me, I was, I was on my way. Because I want to know why I had become as successful as I had become. I'd been raised to believe if you're going to earn a lot of money, you've got to, have a, got to be really smart. Well, we know that that's not true. You know people that are earning all kinds of money, and they're not very bright at all. I was earning all kinds of money, and I knew I wasn't that smart. No, I wasn't exactly stupid, but I wasn't that bright. I was raised, if you don't go to school, you're not going to win. You won't get a good job. I didn't have a good job. I owned the whole company. I had people working for me. I had people, we were hiring people. I never, I never did meet those people, some of them, because they're scattered over a number of different cities. And, and so I had to know what happened. And you know something? I'm still studying it. And that's what got me into this. When I got the dots to connect pretty well, all I wanted to do was teach it. All I wanted to do was teach this. I didn't want to do anything else. Now, I was working at Nigel Conant when I got the dots to connect. Prior to that, all I wanted to do was work with Earl. I didn't know Lloyd. I'd gone to Chicago in the mid-60s to meet Earl, and I got an hour with him, which I treasured. And so I left there knowing I was coming back there one day. When I asked him, I said, Earl, what is the big deal? Well, he said, there isn't any big deal. He said, the trick is to figure out what you love to do and dedicate your life to it. Well, that really jazzed me because I knew exactly what I'd love to do. I'd love to do what he was doing. And I wanted to do it with him. I didn't tell him that because I had a lot of responsibility outside of there that I had to take care of. I had to figure out, how am I going to do this? We had business going in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, and London, England. I'm going to walk away from it all and just go to work for $18,000. You can imagine where everybody's head was. They thought, what is the matter with this guy? You've worked so long, you've worked so hard. But that's what I was working for. That's what I was working toward. You see, you don't have to satisfy the mind of somebody else with what you're doing. Now, I know that some of you think you do, and some of you really try to, and it may be your spouse, or it could be your mother or your uncle, but you don't have to satisfy them. They don't know what you're doing. They don't really know you. No one really knows you like you know you. And if you deny what you know you should do, then you're cheating you.
and you'll never become what you're capable of becoming. Now, does that mean that you should be arrogant and, you know, uh, no thought of the other person? No, it doesn't mean that at all. You should be very uh, sympathetic to their thoughts and their ideas, and, but they don't know. You know, I was going to ask you this the other day, Mary, and I, then we, the subject got changed or something. Do you remember the time, I, do, I know you do remember, and you remember the person, I just remember the size of the person, he was a little man, physically, and he was, um, Mary was selling a program that I had worked with her, helping her put it together, and she was selling it, and it was for twelve, thirteen thousand dollars twelve thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars and this guy really wanted to go i mean he was he was all in, but he, he couldn't because he just couldn't his wife would get upset and i and Mary said, "Do you want to talk to him?" And I said, "Sure." So I said, how do you know your wife would get upset? Well, he says, I know my wife. He said, I don't do anything without getting her approval first. I said, what the hell are you doing that for? And she doesn't do anything without getting my approval first. And I said, you know, when you get married, they don't say this is an ownership. Now you own her or you own him. It's a relationship. You're two distinct individuals that seem to have a lot in common, so you want to spend your lives together, but you cannot permit her to decide for you any more than you can decide for her. I said, I don't think your wife enjoys living like that. I said, why don't we phone your wife? Why don't you go to your wife and say, honey, I have made a decision. If I want to do something that I'm going to spend money on, I'm not going to ask for your permission anymore. I just want to follow my heart and do it. And if you want to do something, don't you feel you have to come and ask me? We said, I don't even know how I talked to her about that. That's why I get her on the phone and I'll talk to her. And so he did. I said, I'm sitting here with your husband. What's his first name? Pardon? David. I said, I'm sitting here with David. David wants to enroll in a program that's going to cost $12,995. Now, that may seem like a lot to you, but if you knew what he was going to get out of it, you would realize just what a small amount of money that is by comparison. And I said, he feels he has to go and talk to you. And you know, I was telling David that that is a terrible way to live. You should never have to ask David if you could spend money on something you really want to spend money on. How would you like to have an agreement with David that from this moment on, if you really want to do something, you go ahead and do it, and David's going to be supporting you all the way? Well, she said, that would be pretty nice. Well, now I said, there's a reciprocal part to that. You've got to do the same with David. And she said, I think that's a great idea. We liberated David. But we also liberated his wife. You can't escape from a prison if you don't know you're in one. The guy was in a prison of his own making. And the door wasn't even locked. I was thinking of him the other day. It was such an excellent example. Now, what was his problem? Lack of education. I'm not talking about school. I'm talking about understanding some basic rules. You've got to discipline yourself to make some big changes. 